Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank the Lord for allowing us once again to come back at his feet. Uh, we are going to look at today's subject dealing the danger of holding tithe and offertory. Let us not forget the main theme of this camp meeting. It's a very important theme. It's the loud cry in one accord to finish the work. The loud cry in one accord to finish the what? The work. We have a great work which the angel, the Lord has been as has given us saying it's the third angel's what? It is the third angel's message. And it says, we are now to labor unceasingly to get the truth before the Jews and Gentiles. Instead of going over and over the same ground to establish the faith of those who should never have accepted the doubt regarding the third angel's message, let our efforts be given to making known the truth to those who have never had it. Okay? God calls upon us to make known to all men the truth that have made us what we are. Seventh day what? Adventists. We are seventh day Adventists because the principles of truth that God has what? Has given us as a movement. Uh, it says, the true Seventh-day Adventist Church is a group of what? Of equal sons and daughters of what? Of the king of what? Heaven, heirs, equal. All of us, we are equal before God. All of us. And that's the reason why we should come into unity and be of one accord. All right? The church force cannot produce true unity but has caused divisions and has given rise to sex and what? Parties innumerable. The just what? Force has cannot what? Produce through unity. There are, and there are not few what? Professing Christian who reject church organization on account of the use that has been made of the creed and the church power. The reason why people today are so careful, let me use that word, to enter into organization is because of what? Yeah? Because of the creed what? Power. But to, to reorganize now is something that we need. It's a necessity. It's a what? A necessity. The work will not go on without being united. We need it now. It says, the remedy for these deplorable evils is found in the power, in the proper use of the simple organization and church order as set forth in the new art, in the New Testament. The simple art, Simple organization, proper use of simple organization and church order has set forth in the what? In the New Testament. The minister who submits his ministry to a superior, to a superior, a bishop, a president, or one in authority in the church to be sent out and directed in his ministry cannot in the fullest sense be Christ's ambassador. If you have a ministry, and you're a minister of that ministry, and you submit your ministry to a bishop, to a president, yeah, or one in authority, he says you cannot be what? Christ what? Ambassadors. Why? Because we are sons and daughters of the heavenly king. We are all equal and heirs equally. All together? 
God has a church and it's not the great word, cathedral. Neither is it the national establishment, neither is it the various denomine, denomination. It is the people who love God and keep his word, commandments. Where two or three are gathered together, Matthew 18, 20, the way there, where Christ is even among the humble few, this is Christ's church for the presence of the high and holy one who inhabits eternity can alone constitute a, a church. So according to, to this quotation, the church are those who fear God and keep his word, commandments. They are in different nations, in different denominations, in different localities. Okay? And But in the book of heaven, even if they are in different places, the record of heaven sees them as what? One, one church. Okay? Has one church. Whether you're in, a, in, in Asia, America, Europe, Africa, all of us, the book of heaven sees us as one what? One church, not independent one, atoms. Where two or three are present who love and obey the commandments of God, Jesus there presides, let it be in the desolate places of the earth, in the wilderness, in the city, enclosed in prison wall. The glory of God has penetrated the prison wall, flooding with the glorious beams of the heavenly light. The darkest, darkest dungeon, his saints may suffer, but their sufferings will, like the apostles of old, spread their faith and win souls to Christ and glorify his holy name. The bitterest opposition expressed by those who hate God's great moral standard of righteousness should not and will not shake the steady fast soul of who trust fully in God. Okay? So the church of God is in every tribe, in every nation, in every continent, in every denomination. As long as they keep, they keep what? The commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. But all these people in different denominations are being called out from different tribes, from different cities to join the fold of Christ, which is the seventh day what? Adventist, the true last day church, which has been founded on true principles of truth. Okay? It says, after the passing of time, God entrusted to his faithful word, followers, the precious principles of present word. Present truth. This truth were given to those who had had no, these principles were not given to those who had had no part in the beginning of the first second angel's what? Message. They were given to the workers who had had a part in the cause from the what? From the beginning. If you want to know these principles of truth which made us Seventh-day Adventists, we need to go back to the writings of the pioneers. Nowhere else shall we get our present truth from the Bible and the writings of the what? Pioneers. If you find that you're believing something which, which the pioneers and the prophet didn't believe, be careful, tread carefully. Yeah? You may be on a new organization. The principles that have made us what? Seventh-day what? Adventists, which are with the pioneers of this movement. And stepping off that platform creates a new what? Organization. The current church here, today seated here, is the old Adventist church. Why? Because we are holding the first principles of the faith. This is not a new organization. But those who have gone back, as Jeremiah uh, 6, 16 says, return back to the old what? To the old path. Now it says, God calls, I beseech those who are laboring for God not to accept the spurious for the genuine. Let not human reason be placed where divine sanctifying truth should be. Christ is waiting to kindle faith and love in the hearts of the people of his people. Let not erroneous theories 
receive countenance from the people who ought to be standing firm on the platform of eternal what? Truth. God calls upon us to hold family to the fundamental principles that are based upon unquestionable authority. Yeah? Yesterday, the elder showed us the 1872 fundamental principles are the ones spoken here. Let me just tell you a little testimony. One time I was in church and I was seated dozing in church during the divine hour. And the head elder was teaching. And then he, he stated something and he said that Jesus did not die. That thing startled me out of my sleep. I stood up immediately and raised my hand and told him, repeat what you just said. And he said, Jesus did not die and asked why. He said, because Jesus is God. Then he asked me, does God die? Then I say, yeah, God doesn't die. Then I told him, yeah, I understand now why you say. It's because of your perception and understanding of who God is. That's why you've made this statement. That was the beginning of my understanding who the true God is. I'm from a Muslim background, whereby I've been taught properly that Jesus did not die. And when I came out of Islam, the greatest verse in the Bible that changed me to become a Christian was John 3.16. And it was so plain to me, because in Islam, the Allah does not send his son or does not die for sinners. Neither does he tell his people to die for sinners, but instead tells the people to kill sinners in order to win them to Islam. So the more sinners you kill, or the more unbelievers you kill, the Kafrunas, the more closer shall you come to Jannah or shall you come to the holy place of heaven. So I hated that system. And my coming out, out of Islam, I came out, out by a gun. They didn't preach to me. My father brought a gun. No, when we went to a community where there were Muslims, Nubians, they told my father to give me to them so that they can train me into Islam, or else if I grow up as a kafiruna, I'll make that children unbelievers, or what called called kafirunas. So my father had to sacrifice me to them so that he may live within that community. So I was raised from childhood, and at the age of 12, I was supposed to be circumcised and be given the name Muhammad Ali. But at that very hour when we are moving, going to the mosque, my, the police patrol car came with six policemen, all with guns, and they stopped right at the door. And my father was there and the chairman. And the chairman asked, do you know this man? Say, yes, you know this man. Do you have his son here? That yes. Who is he? Opio. Then they said, give him back his son. This is the way he came out of Islam. And my father did not tell me even a single word, even a single word, word from that day on. But questions started ringing to my mind. If I is not the true God, then who is the true God? If Quran is not the true word of Allah, then what is the true word of God? If Islam, Islamic people, are not the true people of, Islam, of Allah, then who are the true people of God? This question disturbs me, disturbed me from, from 1997 until 2014. In 2014, just when the elder told me Jesus did not die, that's when I recognized I need to go back and search the true God. When I went back to study my Bible from 2014, 2016, by 2016, I came to a proper understanding in my room of who the true God. I never went to church. I kept studying from home. And Jesus paid even everything, single, every, he paid the school fees of that study for three years. And I came to know that indeed there's one God and Jesus is the only begotten son of God who came and took my, our nature or my nature and died for my sins. And he lives in me by his Holy Spirit. That understanding made me who I am today. Yeah. So we need to what? To stand on the fundamental principles 
that made us who we are, since the Adventists. It's not the name. We saw this quotation yesterday when uh, Elder was explaining. I just want to rush through something. Okay. All right. Let's start with this. We read this also. Now we have an error among us, and that error is about withholding tithe. For may I believe the manifestation that we shall be in one accord, as it was in the days of the apostles, it was when they brought their offertory, their will, free will offering, at the foot of the, at the feet of the apostles. That was the manifestation to show that they are of one accord. The work that we have been given is a worldwide, worldwide work. work. It's not only in Kenya here, but it should go everywhere. We should have a ministry, we should have a church, we should have a gospel order whereby we shall have Bible workers to send ministers to each part of the nation. If you indeed know what it means to be a sinner. It says here, oh, if all who have a knowledge of the truth would only obey the teaching of this truth, why is it that men standing on the very threshold of eternal world are so blinded? There is not a death of means. We have the means. We have the what? The means. Generally speaking, among seven the what? Adventists. But many Seventh day Adventists fail to realize the responsibility which rests upon them to cooperate with God and Christ for the saving of the what? Of the souls. They do not show forth the world the great interest God has in a sinner. They do not make the most of the opportunity granted them. The leprosy of what? Selfishness has taken hold of the church. The Lord Jesus Christ will heal the church of this terrible disease if she will be healed. The remedy is found in the 58th chapter of Isaiah. And Sister White says the 58th chapter of Isaiah, the true medical missionary work. She says here, on the morning of October 23rd, 1879, about two o'clock, the spirit of the Lord rested upon me, and I beheld sins in the morning, in the coming judgment. The great day of execution of God's judgment seems to have come. 10,000 times 10,000 were assembled before a large throne upon which were seated, which was seated a person of majestic appearance. Several books were what? Were before him and upon the covers of each was written in letters of gold, which seems like what? A, a burning flame of fire, ledger of heaven. One of these books containing the names of those who claim to believe the truth was then opened. Those who claim to believe the what? Meaning one book in heaven is for those who have professed faith in Christ, isn't it? Those who proclaim to believe the present truth for this hour, they have a specific book in heaven. So she sees the sin of judgment, and one of these books was opened. This says, as these persons were, as these persons were named, one by one, their good deeds mentioned, their countenance would light up with the holy word, joy. Now see the next statement. This says, another book was opened wherein were recorded the sins of those who profess the truth under the general heading of what? Selfishness came every other what? Sin. Every other what? So the sin of withholding tithe falls under with general what? Heading, selfishness. Has the one holy upon the throne slowly turned the leaves of the, leg of the ledger and his eyes rested for a moment upon individuals, his glance seems to burn into their very souls. And at the same moment, 
every word and action of their lies passed before their word. Minds as clearly has no place before their word. Vision in letters of fire. Now, how is God going to remove this selfishness? I got this quotation from Desire of Ages. It comforted my heart. It says, looking upon the crucified redeemer, we more fully comprehend the magnitude and meaning of the sacrifice made by the majesty of heaven. The plan of salvation is glorified before us and the thought of Calvary awakens living and sacred emotions in our hearts. Praise to God and the Lamb will be in our hearts and on our heart, our lips. For pride and self-worship cannot flourish in the soul that keeps fresh in memory the sins of Calvary. Understood that? Why is that selfishness? Because we don't behold the crucified what? Savior. We don't behold it. He said, he who keeps afresh the sins of Calvary, pride and self-worship cannot flourish in the soul. Who wants to continue to be in pride and self-worship? If we don't want, then let us keep afresh the sins of Calvary. There you'll behold Christ dying for the sinner. And it will pain you to the heart. Why are you withholding the money for the salvation of a poor sinner? For you, your rights are the courts of, the, of our God. But there is one who is yet far off and you are withholding the money to bring him at the foot of the cross. He who beholds the Savior's matchless love will be elevated in thought and purified in heart and transformed in character. He will go forth to be a light to the world and to reflect in some degree this mysterious love. The more we contemplate the cross of Christ, the more fully we shall adopt the language of the Apostle, when he said, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Keep the sins of Calvary fresh in your soul, and selfishness and pride will do what? Will vanish you will realize that the longer you retain the offertory and tithe in your pocket, the more the sinner digs deeper in sin. The danger of hold, withholding tithe. Now let's listen. Now let's listen carefully to these testimonies. You've noticed I've not gone so much in the Bible because I know you know the verses very well. But we need to hear the counsel from the Spirit of Christ. It says, I was shown that the recording angel makes a faithful recording of every word offering dedicated to God and put into the treasury and also of the final result of the means thus bestowed. There's a recording angel. Yeah? The eyes of God takes cognizance of every fasting devoted to his cause and of the willingness and reluctance of the giver. Yo, we have, God says he loves a cheerful what? Giver. But there are those who graduate giving and there are those who hesitate or reluctantly give. Everything is seen by the God of heaven. The motive in giving is also chronicled. Your motive of giving. That those who give tithe and offertory because they want to be leaders in the church. They want to be recognized. They want to have favor from men. 
true, you will get your favor from men. But from the God of heaven, no. But those self-sacrificing and consecrated ones who render back to God the things that are his, as he requires of them, will be rewarded according to their what? works. Even though the means such consecrated be misapplied, so that it does not accomplish the object which the donor had in view. The donor may, may send money for the camp meeting or for evangelism or for printing or for any other thing. You have done your part. You have done what? Your part. The glory of God and the salvation of soul. Those who made the what? The sacrifice in what? In sincerity of soul with an eye single to the glory of God will not lose their reward. Will not lose their what? Reward. Let the receiver of the tithe and offering, let him lose his reward. But you as the giver, don't dare lose your what? Reward. Tithes and offerings must not be withheld by givers, even if they are not in harmony with what the conference does. This is so strong, isn't it? Tithes and offerings must not be withheld by givers, even if they are not in harmony with what the conference does. You who have been withholding your means from the course of God, read the book of Malachi and see what is spoken there in regard to tithes and offerings. Cannot you see that it is not best under any circumstance to withhold your tithes and offerings because you are not in harmony with everything your brethren do? The tithes and offerings are not the property of any man, but are to be used in doing a certain work for God. Certain work for what? For God. This is not your property. It's not for you to buy good clothes. It's not for you to please your family. It is to do a specific work in the field of God. Unworthy ministers may receive some of the means thus raised, but there, there anyone, because of this, because of the unworthy ministers, withhold from the treasury and brave the curse of God. I dare not. Even if there is a, she's saying, even if there's what? Unworthy what? Minister. You're not supposed to withhold your what? Your tithe. I pay my tithes gladly and freely, saying, as the David, of thine own have we given thee. A selfish withholding from God will turn to poverty in our own souls. Act your part, my brethren and sisters. God loves you and he stands at the helm. If the conference business is not managed according to the order of the Lord, that is the sin of the erring ones. Not your sin. Your sin will be of withholding the tithe. Okay? So don't dare receive the curse of God by withholding the tithe. You give, let the everyone receive his reward from God. Okay? Now, if I'm talking about conference, I'm talking about the all Adventist faith. Okay? All right? And we are leaving the current Adventist mainstream and we are getting back the old path or to the old church. Yeah? The faith once given to the what? The saints. So when she's talking about the conference, she's talking about those simply Adventists who are still holding the principles that made this who we are simply what? Adventists. And we are those who are getting back to that. It says, the Lord will not hold you responsible for it. If you do what you can do to correct this 
the evil, but do not commit sin yourselves by withholding from God his property. Thus be he that doeth the work of the Lord negligently or deceitfully. Okay? All right. You who have been withholding your means from the cause of God, read the book of Malachi and see what is spoken there in regard to what? To Titus. Cannot you see that it is not best under any circumstance to withhold your tithes and offering because you are not in harmony with everything in the, that your brethren do? The tithes and offering are not the property of any man, but are to be used in doing a certain work for his work. Unworthy ministers may receive some of the what? Of the means that raised, but they are not because of withholding uh, from the treasury of what? Of God. Yeah? A selfish withholding of God will tend to poverty in our souls. Yeah? Okay. Now, listen to this. He says, when persons declare that they will not pay their tithes. Because, why? Because the means is not used as they think it ought to be. Will the elder of the church or the minister sympathize with the sinners? Who are the sinners? Those holding the what? Those who have declared openly that what? I'm not going to pay tithes and offering because the means I've given are not being used the way they ought to be used. They are called what? Sinners. So they're saying, will the elder of the church or the minister sympathize with the sinners? The answer is what? No. Will he aid the enemy in his work? Or will he, as a wise man, endued with knowledge, go to work to correct the evil and remove the stumbling blocks? Let those who are dissatisfied, who are dissatisfied, state plainly their grievances to the ones who they think have erred instead of talking the matter over with, the, with others and thus fanning the flame of discontent. Okay? If you've seen a minister misappropriating funds, Go direct to the minister and talk to him. Do not make it notorious. Do not make it what? Notorious. All right? Okay. <clears throat> My brethren, I wish to say to you, be careful how you move. You are not moving wisely. The least you have to speak about the tithe that has been appropriated to the most needy and the most discouraging field in the world, the most sensible you will be. It has been presented to me for years that my tithe was to be appropriated by myself to aid the white and colored ministers. Colored means black ministers who were neglected and did not receive sufficient, sufficient properly to support their what? Their families. Now, or at times read the statement and they take the liberty of using the tithe according to their own human judgment. According to their own human what? Judgment. But let's continue and see what she says. When my attention was called to age ministers, white and black, white or black, it was my special duty to investigate into the necessities and supply their needs. This was to be my special work and I have done this in a number of cases. No man should give no to the world, to the fact that in special cases, the tithe is used in, a way, in that way. What does this word mean? See, it means what? Exposure to public what? Knowledge. The state of being publicly or generally what? known. He's saying that don't, don't take this case and take it as a public rule that therefore everyone can use the tithe the way he sees it fit. Okay? 
you're not supposed to do that. There are special cases whereby it can apply. Yeah? Just in case of baptism, where she, uh, she said that if there's no ordained minister, he who brought that evangelist who brought what? Who brought the people into the truth? If there's no ordained minister within any reach, then he has to go into the water and baptize the what? The believer. But if there is ordained minister, let the work be done by ordained what? Ministers, okay? The same thing here. If there's already gospel order and we have a treasury, let the money go to the treasury the treasury you understand okay thank you then say in regard to the colored work in south that field has been and is still being robbed of the means that should come to the workers in that field if there have been cases where our sisters have appropriated their ties to the support of the ministers working for the colored people in the south let every man if he is wise hold his peace I have myself appropriated my tithe to the most needy cases brought to my notice. I have been instructed to do this, and as the money is not withheld from the Lord's treasury, it is not a matter that it should be commented upon, for it, is, for it will necessitate my making known these matters which I do not desire to do because it is not best. Okay? Is she against the treasury? No. Yeah? She's not. So she says, some cases have been kept before me for years and I have supplied their needs from the, from the tithe, as God has instructed me to do. And if any person shall say to me, Sister White, will you appropriate my tithe where you know it is most needed? I shall say, yes, I will. And I have done so. Yeah? Anyone can call. Can call either Kevin, can call either Pastor Allen or who and say, where should I appropriate my tithe? He has been in the field. He can say, send it to what? To Kenya, send it to Ethiopia, send it to where? To South Africa. Why? Because he knows there's a work being done in that field and it is being neglected. It's not being supported by the, by the conference. Understand that? Uh -huh. I commend those sisters who have placed their tithe where it is most needed to help those do, to help to do a work that is being left undone. If this matter is given publicity, it will create a knowledge which will would better be left as it is. He said, Allah, don't take this and make it a public word rule. There are special word cases. I do not care to give publicity to this work which the Lord has appointed me to do and others to do. I send this matter to you so that you shall not make a mistake. Yeah. Lastly, consequences alter what? Cases. That's why she's speaking this. There are consequences, there are circumstances, I mean, there are circumstances which alters what? Cases. I would not advise that anyone should make a practice of gathering up what? Tight money. But for years there have now and then been persons who have lost confidence in the appropriation of tithe, who have placed their tithe in my hands and said that if I did not take it, they would themselves appropriate it to the families of the most needy ministers they could find. Okay? Don't do, don't do this. Yeah? We have already and organize what? Oh, we are turning to us gospel order. We want this work to be worldwide. Not only in Kenya, but all over the world. We need to be well organized. Like an army with banners, isn't it? And we need a central treasury where the means would be able to be distributed evenly to all ministers so that no part of the field will be neglected or left undone. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the His Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> 
Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the work of salvation that you're doing for us all at this time. Dear Father, there's no greater gift that we can give you except to give you our sinful wayward heart that you may cleanse it from all selfishness and remove anything that will bar your blessing from reaching us. May you open our eyes that we could be able to see. May you renew our minds that may not conform to the standards of the world. Help your people, Lord, to stand shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart, seeing eye to eye as an army with banners ready to march into battle. Help us, Lord, for you're the mightiest general who has never lost a battle. And we, we trust in thee that you will heal this church of selfishness and give us love flowing with your grace to the dying world. May Jesus come and be with us. Amen.